Well, I mean, I've, I've been very fortunate, you know, right from the very start, I've always worked with really good people because I've always worked at the King's Theatre, be it in Glasgow or in Edinburgh. So you tend to get, you know, the, 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 the you know, the big names. Um, and I've been very fortunate that we haven't had too many experiences with people like, like you mentioned, there have been in the past, but not, not so much in the shows that I worked, that I worked on. Um, but I've, I've had the, the good fortune to work with some terrific performers. Like my first, my first show was with Alan Stewart, who has just been a sort of constant in my panto career. It feels like, uh, right, literally from, from, from that very first show. And I just watched him as, and I remember watching him as in, in rehearsals, as much as I watched him on, on stage and, and my abiding memory of Alan Stewart in the first show that we did was when we're doing our sound check and you know you're doing your your tech you did your tech call for the for the sound the sound team and you basically that involves you walking on stage with your head mic on and you read out a few lines or and sing part of your song and of course I go on and I'm going hello one two one two hello one two yep I can hear myself that's great how's that sound that's in great fine and then I'm off Alan would be going on and he would go on hello and he'd walk all over the stage and he'd be trying to hear himself. And I can't hear myself. I need more fold back over here. I need fold back. I'm going, what's, what's, what's this fold back that he's talking about? <laughs> fold back over here. Can't hear anymore. Now we can't give you any more, Alan. We've got back. He says, well, I need some more. I need to get it. I need to get it right. And then he walked down to the other part of the stage. Now I can't hear any fold back here. I need to hear. And then the band would start. He says, too much band. I need to have that down. I need to hear myself better than And it's like, I'm going, what? I mean, what's the difference? What, what's the, what's the, <laughs> why, why does he make such a big song and dance about hearing himself, you know? But actually, what that taught me was that's absolutely vital because if you don't hear yourself on stage, you then push it with your voice. And then you just, you raise your voice, you start shouting and you start topping and you, you start going like that because you're trying to top the audience, which you'll never do. Whereas if you hear yourself, as you would John in the studio with your headphones on and yeah. it's nice and lush and you hear yourself and that, that's great. You can, you can use your voice and all the magic and all the range that it gives you. But if you don't hear anything, then you're automatically going to shout. Your voice isn't going to, a week if you're <laughs> doing that and alan knows that as a professional and i learned that because my first few shows inevitably i'd lose my voice <laughs> yeah. uh, like that, you know, and so so things like that i learned but just by listening going, why is he shouting about this stuff fold back because nobody tells you what you're what you're expected to do and you just do it by learning so like of alan i've watched and learned and and uh uh and, and i you know got great insights from and all different aspects of of the job from him Chris Biggins was my first. Uh, he was sort of top of the bill with Alan in that show. And then I came through to Edinburgh and I worked with Cannon and Ball. I was a massive fan of Cannon and Ball in the 80s. So just as a fan, I would just sort of sit in the wings and watch them do the same routine every single night, twice a day. But there would always be a wee moment that Bobby would throw something in <laughs> or do something different. And even, and even if it was, it was still a very funny routine and they were still hilarious. So I would watch and watch and watch. And then Cannonball traveled through to, to Glasgow the following year. I went with the show and Jimmy Logan joined us. Mm -hmm. So then next thing I'm working with Jimmy Logan. And I was doing a, I did a front cloth routine with Jimmy Logan. And he taught me a couple of tiny little things about, you know, just about where to place. If you're going to point your arm, you know, point the one that's upstage, because if you do that, then you're going to mask yourself to the audience and all these little tiny little nuggets in, and that I've never forgotten. Um, and of course, working with Jimmy Logan. Jesus, just walk, and he would just bring these wonderful routines, and then go on to work with um, Elaine C. Smith, Gerard Kelly, Barbara Rafferty, Eileen McCallum, Paul Young, um, and of course Andy Gray, my big my big China, and I've watched and learned from them all. And you know, Andy's Andy and my relationship, you know, went beyond Panto. So I've been very fortunate with the people that I work with have been pretty much the creme de la creme, if you like, the performers. And for a, a sort of, you know, wet behind the ear performer like myself, I've learned by doing it. So from 1993 to 2021, where we are now, with have done Panto every single year, obviously bar, bar COVID and bar, bar one. And I've just learned by doing it and watching. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, I've been very fortunate. 